Welcome back everyone to Ancient Monsters. Today let's do a little thought experiment. Imagine a mad scientist zaps you back in time, forcing you to pick a random moment in the age of dinosaurs. Whatever you do, do not, under any circumstances, pick 150 million years ago. This wasn't just any dinosaur era, this was the late Jurassic. A golden age for absolute giants and terrifying predators, where instant death was hiding around every corner. First off, you wouldn't even recognize the planet. Forget your modern maps, North America had a familiar shape, but to its south was the colossal supercontinent Gondwana. A mega blob of land made of South America, Africa, Antarctica, India, and Australia. Meanwhile, Europe was a scattered mess of tropical islands, closer to North America than it is today. The world was dominated by two major oceans, the ancient Tethys and the massive Pacific, and a brand new body of water was just being born, a narrow, steamy sea that would one day become the Atlantic Ocean. And it was hot. Thanks to massive volcanic activity, the atmosphere was packed with CO2. Average global temperatures were around 20 degrees Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit. There were no polar ice caps. The poles themselves were temperate forests and much of the world was covered in harsh savannas and deserts with brutal dry seasons. But life, especially dinosaur life, was thriving. This era was a chaotic free-for-all. Ecosystems were jam-packed with different species, and nowhere shows this better than North America's famous Morrison Formation. If you were dropped here, your biggest problem would be the theropods. The king of the carnivores was Allosaurus, the lion of the Jurassic. This nine-meter-long predator was built to kill with a slashing bite and sharp claws, and it was everywhere, making up 75% of all predator fossils found. But Allosaurus wasn't even the biggest. That title went to giants like Saurophaganax and Torvosaurus, five-ton behemoths that made Allosaurus look average. You also had the mid-sized Ceratosaurus, a ferocious hunter in its own right. So how did all these predators live together? The answer is simple, niche partitioning. They carved up the environment. Ceratosaurus preferred hunting near water, while Allosaurus stuck to the open plains. This kept the peace, most of the time. During severe droughts, all bets were off, and fossils show evidence of rampant violence and even cannibalism. Of course, with so many predators, the herbivores had to be tough. And they were. You had the iconic Stegosaurus, a five-ton tank armed with a deadly spiked tail called a Thagomizer. And yes, we have fossils of an Allosaurus with a Thagomizer-sized hole in it. Also fresh on the scene were the first armored Ankylosaurs like Mymora Pelta, covered head to toe in bony plates. But the true rulers of the landscape were the Sauropods. This was their peak. The world was teeming with these long-necked giants. You had the whip-tailed Diplodocus, the high-shouldered Brachiosaurus, the legendary Brontosaurus, and the incredibly common Camarasaurus. These weren't just big, they were titans. The smallest weighed 13 tons and the largest pushed 70 tons. Imagine herds of walking skyscrapers shaking the ground with every step. And this wasn't just a North American thing. This template of giant predators and even bigger herbivores was found all over the world, from giraffe titan in Africa to massive sauropods in Europe. So could you escape to the skies? Not really. The skies were ruled by pterosaurs. These flying reptiles weren't dinosaurs, but they had been in charge up there for 80 million years. Most were fish eaters, but the largest, with wingspans of up to 12 feet, were big enough to hunt small land animals. And for the first time, they had company. A new type of creature was taking flight. Bird-like dinosaurs. The most famous is Archaeopteryx, the earliest known animal capable of powered flight, a true evolutionary marvel. Okay, so the land and sky are out. Surely the water is safe? Absolutely not. The oceans were pure nightmare fuel. This was the domain of the plesiosaurs, but forget the graceful long-necked creatures you're imagining. The apex predators were the pleosaurs, a family of short-necked plesiosaurs with massive skulls and teeth like railroad the spikes. Zone. The, the most terrifying was Pliosaurus, dark a 10-meter, five-ton monster that hunted sharks for fun. And if that's not enough, the seas also had giant marine crocodiles. Creatures like Decosaurus and Mishimosaurus were not true crocs, but they looked the part, with flippers instead of legs and mouths full of flesh-shearing teeth. They were apex predators in their own right, growing as long as a modern bus.
Amidst all these giants, you might wonder where our ancestors were. They were there. The mammalia forms, our distant relatives, were scurrying in the shadows. Most were no bigger than a shrew, living secretive lives, climbing trees and burrowing underground, just trying not to get stepped on or eaten. So from the giant-filled plains to the monster-patrolled oceans, 150 million years ago was truly a golden age for terrifyingly huge life. It's an incredible period to study, but trust me, it's the absolute last place you'd ever want to visit. Thanks so much for joining us on this trip back in time. If you enjoyed exploring these ancient monsters, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss our next adventure. And let us know in the comments below, what prehistoric time period do you think is the most terrifying? This is Ancient Monsters signing off. See you in the next one.